Hi everyone, King Edgy here bringing you another Gen 1 video. In this series, we are calling it Hard Mode. And here's the deal we have to intentionally sacrifice one of our Pokemon, doing as little damage as possible, uh, and then we play a 5 on 6 battle. So let's see how this goes against a top player here in Zipple. Um, okay, so. Mankey knows counter. It's possible that Mankey could just keep using counter and not hurt anything. Okay, it's possible Thunder Wave can go off. It's possible that Pinsir can come in and just Swords Dance. I'm gonna try to let Mankey come out and counter things. Darn it. Okay, this isn't good because Aerodactyl's gonna go for Double Edge, right? and it's going to get hurt by counter, and we're not supposed to be allowed to attack it. So I'm going to go out into Pinsir and Swords Dance and have to sacrifice Pinsir. Oh, that's going to be real sad. Dang, he went Fire Blast. That's no problem. I mean, our goal was to get sacrificed, but the, the sadness is if we stayed in with Mankey, counter wouldn't have damaged Zipple at all. So let's see. As we sacrifice... Our pincer. What will happen? Great. Successfully sacrificed. All right. Now what should we do? Um, we don't have a great answer. So I think we're going to go back to Exeggutor and try to eat this Fire Blast because Aerodactyl Special is straight trash. Straight trash, homie, as they say. So here we go. Gonna just put it to sleep after it fire blasts us. Right, it does basically no damage and we get it put to sleep. Awesome. Uh, now we'll just psychic. He'll stay asleep. He'll get hit by the psychic as he ponders what to do here. But it feels to me like Venusaur does not know sleep powder because I think it would have stayed in against Exeggutor. So maybe we have a good advantage here. Maybe we can crit seal, maybe we can drop a special. We can do nothing, it's fine. We have a Cloyster here. Cloyster can eat this blizzard all day, every day. Sorry, it's a little laggy here for you. It's a little laggy for me too, so it's kind of tough. Um, so seal comes out, it's surf, does a decent amount of damage to our Cloyster, so we can probably take one and then explode. But I think what we'll do instead is just blizzard our heart out for the whole time. And this way we hope to catch Aerodactyl on the switch. And if we happen to get the freeze on seal, I mean, oh no, how bad would that be? So, that's our hope. He might be thinking, is he going to go explosion here, right? Because it would make sense. Protects against a crit. It's a play that a lot of folks are making these days, the early explosion. Explode a little bit earlier than needed. And Zipple's just taking his time here, trying to figure out what the right play might be. I'm just going to confirm that my lagginess is not the problem. Okay, great. Zipple makes his decision. And, uh, yeah, we're going to just stay in Blizzard one more time. We'll get the freeze this time, though. No. Okay, now we can explode. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason for him to do anything other than surf. So we can safely explode there. And now let's think about things. I guess Nido King is a fine switch in here. Thunderbolt should take the 30% from Seal. You know, Earthquake might also, but... Okay, no problem. We get the KO. So, you know what? It's basically 4-4 four to four since Aerodactyl's asleep. Mew comes out. We don't know if it's Swords Dance Earthquake or what. If it happens to be like Psychic Blizzard, we could be in a lot of trouble. I think we're in less trouble if it's Swords Dance Earthquake because Exeggutor is there. So... 
I guess the situation is we could risk the swords dance go into Mankey. Mankey could eat a psychic and just be donezo. We could go Exeggutor and hope Mew doesn't have Blizzard. If Mew doesn't have Blizzard, Exeggutor is pretty good. We could stay in with Nidoking, take one attack. Actually, that might not be so bad. Let's stay in with Nidoking, just to kind of scope out this Mew. Hoo hoo! The big time crit. And now we're living that sweet life. Um, that sweet crit life. So let's see here. You know, King's Body Slam does a minimum of 19.6. Mew's got 20, so we feel good about this Body Slam, knocking him out, right? All right. I'm going to switch to Body Slam here, as I usually do in the event where I think someone might switch out, just because it could paralyze, and that's always really nice. So, okay, we are feeling good. And one thing I'll say about the percentages here, so Mew has 20%, right? But... It's very unlikely that it's exactly 20%, and this percentage always rounds up. Even if he's at 19.1% right now, it'll round up to 20. And so the fact that I did 19.6% as a minimum made me feel like I had him guaranteed dead to rights. So anyway, that was pretty good. Uh, he sends out Venusaur now, which is surprising to me. So I'm going to stay in Blizzard and hope that he doesn't have Sleep Powder. Yeah, he just goes for the Razor Leaf. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty surprising to me still. I'm going to stay in an Earthquake here. I think he might switch to Body Slam expecting Executor maybe. I'm not really totally sure what's happening here. Maybe he thought Venusaur was just worthless because it couldn't do anything to Executor, so he decided to stay in with it. I mean, it does a lot of damage to Nido King. That's definitely true. Now it's in range of a Mankey Body Slam, so there's no way he's saving it. But it should also be in range for a Nido King Body Slam. So we just Body Slam, take it out. Now we just hope that Nido King's still faster than something in the back. Hope there are no fire types lingering in the back. But um, that crit from Nido King onto Mew really turned this battle for us. Alakazam comes out. Alakazam can't do a ton to Exeggutor. It could paralyze it, but it can easily take the seismic toss. Okay, and he goes psychic, which is fine. Uh, we'll, we have 139, so we can survive two seismic tosses actually, which is clutch. Um, we're gonna just go for the psychic ourselves. Yeah, there we go. He's starting to worry about those early explosions. We're going to switch to Mega Drain here and hope to get a lot of our health back. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We've got a nice amount of health now. Um, and you know what? We're going to Mega Drain again. Get this health back. It's a good amount of health, right? Now we're going to Psychic. Or get fully paralyzed. That's okay. I guess that happens. Um, I think I might explode right now. I don't know. It's risky, right? I think I might do it, though. I think he doesn't expect me to after I've stayed in so much. Yeah, he goes seismic toss. Yeah, we go explosion. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I've got Pikachu. I really hope it's faster than whoever his last is. His last is Machop. I think we've got this. I think we've got this. Hopefully Machop doesn't one-shot us with Earthquake. And then I think we've got it. Whew. Yeah, we survived that, no problem. And he forfeits, the forfeit comes in. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Whew. Hard mode always uh, makes me nervous here. So let's get another one in. Yeah, um, what went well for us that game? I guess just the Nido King crit. I mean, without it, were we done? Maybe. Depends if Mew knew soft boiled versus um, uh, explosion, right? Because Mew probably would have taken Nido King out. And then 
then it would have been a, a much different battle. Executor still would have been really hard for him to knock out, though. So I'm kind of surprised that he went Venusaur against Nidoking, knowing Nidoking would win that battle, and knowing he only needed a little bit of damage to get him in range for Alakazam. I don't know, I guess I might have gone Machop against Nido King there. But um but Venusaur was kinda useless against Exeggutor, so I guess he figured Machop it was better to save Machop. I'm not sure. Okay, so look at this. We've got true Wario. True Wario, a legend on the ladder here, was around back in the day when Groudon 80 and If Exuded kind of reigned atop this ladder. True Wario was the the three the third of the three-headed monster, not because he was the worst, just because he was the third one. That was up on the leaderboard all the time. Haven't battled him in a while. Um, we actually had a, a holiday tour against him a couple of years ago. But it's been a while since I've seen him. Uh, we have to sacrifice somebody. Okay, so it has to be Bellsprout, because Bellsprout knows Swords Dance uh, and Sleep Powder. And it could have been Alakazam, but I'd rather have Alakazam than Bellsprout. So we're going to dance around here. Okay, Ditto comes out. He's got twice the attack. Now we've got three times the attack, ready to unleash the doublest edge of all time. Dang, he got us good. Dang, he got us real good. Um, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I accidentally clicked double edge there. I should have clicked sword stance because not allowed to do any damage. Okay, but he's still at 74% health. I'm not sure if Alakazam gets this. Ah, he does not get it. Um... Kingus on Hyper Beam doesn't get it. Oh, but I'm looking at Bellsprout's health. That's the problem. I need to be looking at Ditto's health. Okay, so Hyper Beam from Kangaskhan does 173 damage. A Ditto at level 88, 173 health. Sorry. Uh, so... Ditto retains its health when it transforms, right? So this percentage against Bellsprout isn't quite right. Um, so the number is right. It's based on Bellsprout's defense stat. So I'm going to make Ditto here have Bellsprout's defense. Bellsprout's defense is only 148. Uh, so 148, it does 67 to 79. Okay, I guess we can try that then. Let's see what happens if we get this hyper beam. Sorry for the long delay there, just doing the calculation. There we go, hey! Right, like we said, should have done 67 to 79, so that was a bit of a high roll, but worked in our favor that time. And now we've already evened it up, which is fantastic. Uh, who do we let go down to Parasect? Well, I guess I'll let Jolteon... No, I'll let Nidoking get put to sleep by Parasect. Because a sleeping Nidoking still beats the Jolteon that he has here. So we're feeling okay about that. He might switch to Stun Spore, Double Powder me. No, nope, but I was hoping he'd body slam and that we'd go out into a normal type and our normal type would be able to eat it because normal types can't get paralyzed by body slam in generation one, which is pretty nice. Uh, and so now he's kind of up a Pokemon, but at the same time, Jolteon can't do anything to Nidoking. He does have the ability to kind of do double switches and things that are kind of clever here. Like he might go Jolteon and then think, 
oh, well, I'm going to go Nido King, and then he doubles out into a water type or something like that. Um, here I'm going to predict that he guesses I go Hyper Beam, and so I'm going to stay in and Body Slam. Well, he predicts I have Hyper Beam. Why would he save Parasect, though? Parasect already did its job. Yep, okay. Boy, a crit machine. That one didn't matter. That first body slam certainly did. Okay, and now we're back more or less to even here. We've got the advantage with Nidoking versus Jolteon. We don't know if he has a ground type, so our Jolteon's still in play. And a Venusaur comes out. We don't love seeing that because Razor Leaf does a ton of damage to us, but um, we just kind of have to stay in with Kangaskhan. Just do enough damage that uh, Psychic will take him the rest of the way out. So I'll just stay in and Body Slam a few times to get him in Psychic range, and then Alakazam can clean it up. Yep. Okay, no problem. Here comes Alakazam to clean this up. Right? Guess he's thinking if something else wants to take a Psychic, yep. That's a fine thought. Dabra comes out. I'm going to switch to Seeking. Let it get paralyzed here. And then um, use Blizzard. I know a physical attack would do more damage, but I, I'm kind of expecting a switch out here. I don't know why I'm expecting one, but I, I kind of am hoping that he goes... Venusaur thinking I'll double edge and then can basically knock us out with Razor Leaf. So if we hit this blizzard. Oh, he goes War Turtle. Okay. So now we know his last, and it's War Turtle. And we can do a decent amount of damage to War Turtle. So now that we know all of his Pokemon, let's think about the win condition here. Um. Is it Seeking? Do we need Seeking to knock out Kadabra? We don't really, right? Like, Alakazam can outlast Kadabra. And we just have to not get baited into going Nidoking against Jolteon. We have to make those right calls. But we should be okay, I think. I'm gonna... My goal is just to get War Turtle into range for... A final attack here, right? So I gotta stay in. I guess I'll surf. Yeah, he seismic tosses. That does a lot of damage to us. Um, I expect that he might not seismic toss this time. Right, he might switch to body slam. That's my guess. Yep, nice guess. Oh, good crit. Okay. Crit double edge did 45. So we try for another double edge and see. Dang, he does seismic toss there. I figured he'd body slam again because um, body slam plus double edge knock, plus seismic toss knocks out. Might as well body slam there. But he body slams here. And uh, we're going Jolteon. And can Jolteon knock out War Turtle? With Body Slam, 12 to 15%. Yes, so we go Body Slam. Again, right, it was 12.7% as minimum. And he's at 13, but that's rounded up, so we kind of feel like it's a guarantee. Okay, now here's the situation. Do we get baited here? And if we get baited, how bad is it? Um... I guess we get baited. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, now what do we do? I think we go back to Alakazam versus Kadabra. And I think we just paralyze him. I don't want Jolteon paralyzed because I want Jolteon to finish the jobs. So I'm going to stay in here 
Um, and Psychic. Nice crit there. He's still paralyzed. So now two tosses knock him out. That was huge. Oh, jeez. That was too lucky for us. That was not outplaying him at all. That was just luck. I like to think that we had it even with that paralysis because the first paralysis guaranteed... Or sorry, the first critical hit that we had, I don't think he expected... Um, I don't think he expected us to have Seismic Toss because we went Psychic, and then landing the crit put him in two Seismic Toss range. So he had to decide to either recover or paralyze us, and I think he would have gone for the Paralysis, but I'm not sure. And now Jolteon's here, and we have to wonder if we're going to get baited again. Um, so I think I'm going to go out to Jolteon, which is the safe play. If he is baiting us and goes out into War Turtle, then we have him with Jolteon. If he's not baiting us, then Jolteon versus Jolteon, um, one of them will get paralyzed, and then hopefully Alakazam can clean up. So let's see what happens. Yep. So no big deal. We'll just Thunderbolt, I suppose. Should we Thunderbolt? Should we Body Slam? I guess we can Body Slam. Body Slam should not get War Turtle because we calced it. It should do more to Venusaur than Thunderbolt. And uh, just hands at seventy eight percent. No, I think we stay in. Dang, we didn't get that. Okay, that's fine. I think we stay in again. Cool. Okay, no problem. That lets us get Alakazam in and get off this Psychic. Now I think we're in pretty good shape. If he decides to double to War Turtle, then we sacrifice Jolteon. And then Alakazam comes in, and now it's a real pickle for a true Wario, right? So we'll stay in and try to wake up once. If War Turtle knows rest, then that's pretty good for him, but, but if he doesn't, we get into this situation, which we like a lot. It's 38, okay. And now I guess the question is, is he going to double out? He hasn't doubled out yet. If he paralyzes Alakazam, do we lose? Um, no. I think... I think we're pretty good. It only does 34 to 40. I thought maybe it was a low roll with that 38. Okay. So I think we do go out Nido King. I think he'll double, though. Right, he's going to double. Yep. Um, and now, what's War Turtle going to do? He's going to body slam, right? He has to body slam to try to paralyze Alakazam on the switch in. No, he goes surf. I can't believe it. Okay, I'm going to switch out. Hope that he doesn't switch to body slam. Well, I really thought he was going to go body slam. He might get us here. No, he goes Seismic Toss. Okay. In that case, do we have him now? <laughs> Close. We could crit or just knock him out straight away. I um, think I switched to Nido King here. I think he's going to stay in this time. He stays in, goes Body Slam. Oh, he's going to try to knock us out. Oh, okay. Hey, wake up, Nino King. Dang. All right, well, here we go. I think we just attack. Great. <laughs> okay, so we pull it out, just barely, just barely. But we do pull it out. That was a good game, true Wario. Um, so hard mode, 
I always try to do three battles. First one against Zipple, we played that one pretty well. Uh, we got a lucky crit against Mew, which was huge. Second game against True Wario, we played it okay. We could have played it better. Um, especially at the end, we 100% predicted that War Turtle switch in, but weren't aggressive enough to double. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we, we decided to switch out of Alakazam instead of staying in, right? Even though we 100% said he's switching out. Um, that led us to the win there. But we might have been able to play around the end game a little bit better. I'm not sure. Like, Alakazam could have come in on the Razor Leaf from Venusaur, or tried to t eat the Hyper Beam, recover up, and then we'd have a healthier Jolteon. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but it was close, and it worked out. And so here comes our third game in hard mode right now. And who do we sacrifice this time? Tangela. It doesn't know Sleep Powder. So uh, it can set up, which is nice, but it's still slow, so I like guess not that good. Um, so we're just going to set up with a little dance here. Take this Thunder Wave. We're going to dance one more time. And we're using Swords Dance and not Growth just because... Uh, Growth would block the blizzards that are coming through a little bit and would make it harder. Uh, so we go down a bummer, but not terrible. We've got Oma Star here. And we're going to Seismic Toss, actually, because we expect the Seedra switch in. We are super wrong because he's trying to put us to sleep. All right, we're switching to Surf. <laughs> we don't want to get put to sleep. We got put to sleep. But Wigglytuff can't really touch us, so... Dang. Ooh, didn't like that. Uh, we got to go Ekans now, just in case he decides to go Sleep Powder. And he doesn't decide that, so that's cool. We can Earthquake here. Go for Sing, please. Go for Body Slam. Does paralyze us. That's really sad. Oh, and gets the full para, too. Ouch. Okay. But that's all right. That's all right. Um, Persian now cleans it up with a Slash. And we're moving forward. But uh, as you can see, this hard mode has gotten hard real fast. Whew. Magneton comes out. It's going to go for Thunder Wave, right? So that does basically nothing to Lickitung, who's already slow. And now Lickitung is free to fire off this Earthquake into nothing. But Omastar blocks this Dodrio pretty hard. And Omastar is going to be an MVP star right now. He's going to be the hero of this video with this Blizzard Freeze on anyone that comes out. Cedra, get frozen. Yeah, I felt pretty good calling it, <laughs> but uh, didn't quite work out. Didn't quite work out how I wanted it to. So we'll just have to seismic toss a little bit. And now Cedra's in range for Persian Slash. It's also in range for a Lickitung Hyper Beam. Or a Charizard Slash, actually. So we want to save Omastar because Dodrio is so good. No, no, I'm going to stay in Seismic Toss. I thought about it, but Dodrio isn't as scary because we have two Pokemon faster than Dodrio. Okay, so Magneton comes out. We have to go Lickitung. Lickitung might go down to two Thunderbolts. I'm not sure. Oh, it'll go down to two Thunders. Sure about that. Um, I'm going to just switch to Hyper Beam. Ooh, he missed. Jeez, <laughs> Lickitung, you're so sad. You're so sad. Um... 
Now what do we do? I guess we go into Persian here, right? Go for the body slam paralysis with Persian, because I don't think Charizard knocks out Magneton. Yeah, it doesn't. So, so okay. So we go Persian, and we go body slam to try to get the paralysis. And then we slash to knock it the rest of the way out. And then we kind of like hope that Charizard can clean up whatever is out there. I don't know if it can one-shot Oddish, but we're just going to try and try some things and see. Maybe he switches to Oddish here. He switches to Dodrio. I guess he's like, I know that Dodrio can't do much. Um... Uh, I think Slash now knocks out this Dodrio. Is that right? Yeah. Great crit. Great crit on that body slam. Slash takes him the rest of the way out. Huge. Rapidash is last. Gigantic for Omastar. What a beast in Omastar here. Uh, there's no way he stays in with Rapidash right now, right? The question is, does he go Oddish? Does he go Magneton? Um, I think he goes Oddish. So I think I'm going to go Charizard. He doesn't switch out! Unbelievable he didn't switch out. I can't believe that. Critical hit. Oh, we get a critical hit. Okay, now he goes Hyper Beam again for sure, right? We resist that easy. Oh, that was a misplay. I should have gone to Persian there, I think. Because... Um... Actually, no, I think this is okay. Because, uh... We can take this Magneton into range for Charizard now. And he can't really switch out to Oddish here. So... We get the Fire Blast off. And then the Blizzard. And then... We've got it. Um, the thinking was... Omastar is still faster than Oddish. And so... If we save it... We've got two critical hits, uh, two super effective moves against Oddish. And Persian would have gotten paralyzed by Magneton. And then at least half of its health gone. So I think that was the right play. And let me check real quick how much Omastar does to Oddish. With Blizzard, it only does about half. Okay, so Charizard definitely has to get this Fire Blast off. And it missed. Oh, thankfully he also missed. Okay, great. Oh, and he's burned. That's game, right? That's super game. I'm just going to wake up and, and win it. Or just win it while sleeping. So, we just won all three of our games in hard mode. That was what I set out to do when I started hard mode. So this series, it's done. Um, I appreciate you watching and following along. Again, we had to get lucky to win it, but we also played pretty solid games here, all three. If you have thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, let me know. If you have other ideas for challenge modes, I'm super happy to hear them. I'd love to try some out. And in the meantime, keep enjoying the rest of the videos on this channel. And I will see you in the next one.